I have seen some interesting risk severity visualization. Uh, the only problem is I find them not being extremely precise or accurate. In this video, I will show you a version here that I believe is much clearer. Now, severity is based on two components. There is a likelihood of a risk, which has a rating usually between one and five. So it goes from rare to almost certain. And the impact of the risk, for instance, one to five from insignificant to severe, for instance. The severity is a combination of those two factors. For instance, as a way to assess severity, we just add those two numbers and that gives us the severity rating. The severity rating goes from two to 10, which is the maximum in this example. So all we are left to do is just to assign a description to this rating. Uh, for instance, like this, from two to three, we say the severity is low, from four to six, we can say it's medium all the way up to extreme. So here I have created severity matrix and I will be just adding the numbers following on the example that we gave before. Just by adding the numbers, we get the severity. So if I go to the top left, I just add the numbers one and five, but I'm very mindful of putting a dollar sign in front of the E, so I lock in the columns and I'm putting the dollar sign in front of the eight, so I lock in the rows. for the impact. And after just a matter of dragging all this, um, here I just report in Excel the, the numbering that I had to decide on the severity of the risk. When this is done, I copy and paste the risk severity matrix, because what I want to do is I want to put a description of the risk rating instead of having a number. Here. So in order to do that, I create a VLOOKUP. Uh, so this is the old lookup, but just in case you have an old version of Excel, I just put it in under the, the VLOOKUP. And I am looking for the value in a risk severity matrix. I am looking for that value in a table that I've created here. And I bring back the description of the severity, low, medium, or high. So I do it once for this one and then I can drag that back across. Now I just want to add a bit of a color to each one of the rating. So I go on the top left cell and I go conditional formatting, new rule, and the format uh, only cells that contain. And I put cell value equal low, and then I format in green. And I do that for each one of the severity ratings, from low to extreme. So low green, medium, I put a bit of an amber, high, a bit of a stronger amber. But for extreme, I just don't put the, the bright red, I just find another one by looking at other colors, and then I just bring it back. And then I can bring that across the table. Now I have created a very basic risk register with a risk number, the description, an impact and likelihood and, and a severity. So this is really the minimal amount of fields that, that, that you need. But I want to add two colons to it. And uh, you can use the control R trick. You just uh, highlight those cells and you press control R. So that should bring uh, the value of the column from the left there. So the first column that I want to create will be for the short description. And I think the description will be too long and it, it would make sense to have that as a, as a summary on the severity matrix. So I'll just do a short description. I just read them this and the concat. What I do is I just concatenate the impact and the likelihood using this formula here. Now here I've added several colons. In fact, what I'm doing here, I'm doing a consolidated risk register. The first thing to do is to retrieve only the unique value from that new field, uh, from that new column, sorry, that we have created. So you use the function unique, 
for all this. And then we need to extract back the impact and the likelihood. I know it's a little bit fiddly, but it's worth it. So what we do for this is we just in we just check that the field on the left is not blank, and then we retrieve the left value of this unique colon. And but as it's going to give us a character, we just put value to ensure that we have a number, because to work with charts we need to have numbers. So we just do this and we drag it down, and then we do the same with a likelihood. Uh, the difference is we extract the right value uh, of this concatenated field. So we have unique impact and likelihood now. So here the last formula, the most complicated formula, I'll have it in the description if you want to copy and paste it. I'm checking that if the unique field is not blank, I'm joining all the descriptions that I find that I have the same impact and likelihood combination together. I have two risks that have the impact of five and the likelihood of one. And I have also two risks that have the impact of two and the likelihood of five. So next I just select the impact and likelihood fields of the consolidated table and I insert a scatter type of chart. With a consolidated table, what we can do now is we can add the data labels. Format data labels. And instead of the value, I'm just going to put value from cells. And I select the text join column. Now I can remove the values. Now. With the other table, obviously, we would have had the two risks here uh, and at the same spot, and that would have been a bit of a challenge. Description. Now, the risk severity matrix visualization that I've seen, they're filling the chart with a gradient fill, and they you know, select from green, a diagonal from green, bottom left to red, top right and I give you something like that but the challenge with this is you don't really know if a risk is amber or red so the last thing you want to do is uh, during a, a meeting you start to debate with the executives in a room oh is that amber or is that red oh, I'm not sure that just <laughs> in between so I mean that can be good I suppose if you if you want to minimize the risk but uh, what, I, what I like to do instead is I go back to that severity matrix and I copy just those fields there and I paste them here, but I paste them as a picture. You go there, this is pasting as a picture. It's, it's beautiful, but anyway. So, and after you click back on the, on the chart area, instead of having gradient fill as I had before, you put a picture and you select clipboard. So if it's not in your clipboard anymore, you can just insert it. So what do you think of that? It doesn't look great at the moment because we cannot visualize the, the risk very well, but we can do some adjustments. The first one is we can put a white background, put a solid field of white into the data, on the, on the data label. Another thing we can do is we go to the label position and we put it in the center. So the label, uh, you don't see the dot anymore. Something that I think also we need to do is to put the, the minimum, you click on the axis, look at the bonds and you put 0 0.5 as a minimum. So that's going to put 5.5 .5 automatically to the maximum. And then you do that for both axes. So what that does is actually it centers nicely your risk severity with the numbers there. And also that will allow us to hide the impact and likelihood at zero that we have in our concatenated uh, field there. So there will not be any dots there. Now, if we find that the picture as a background is too strong, we can go back to the format plot area and we can change the transparency of the background image. So it's a little bit, it's there, it's in the background, it's a little bit less intrusive. Uh, what we can do, uh, maybe we have a look at this later on, how it looks like, is just to put the description at the bottom 
of each cell, so it's not right bang in the in center, uh, but we can uh, do that uh, towards the end. Something else that we can do is to show some arrows. When you share this risk matrix, it might be clearer. Uh, you, you create an arrow and inside, you put impact for the horizontal, and then you duplicate that arrow and you put likelihood, the vertical axis. Now, if we go back to our matrix, what you can do is you can align the description at the bottom instead, and then you copy and paste it as a, as a picture. And now you just need to replace the background picture with this picture from the clipboard. This might look a little bit clearer. Now, if you don't want to have to create a short description for each one of your risks, you could, you could just put the, the number that you could just put either just the number or you can concatenate uh, the text risk with uh, the number of your risk. So this way you would have risk one, risk two, risk three. So this is it. So I hope you like this uh, visualization. I, I, I do, but I might be a bit biased. I'll catch you later.